You made it to the voyage on the Mayflower. Let's check this out. The words say this. The 1620 voyage from England to America was more than 3,000 miles and beset by autumn storms. Learn what it was like to live and work on a 17th century sailing vessel and relive part of this epic journey. Now you're actually gonna take the journey on your own on the next page, but let's click tour the ship, mostly because this doesn't work on the iPad. <laughs> I'm gonna put it in full screen mode so we can take a close look. The Mayflower was no cruise ship. In fact, she wasn't built for passengers at all. Take a look around the merchant vessel that brought 102 pilgrims to America. Let's start with number one. It says the rigging. That's like the sails. Like all 17th century ships, the Mayflower was powered by the wind. To adjust her six sails, the crew had to work 55 different lines, sort of like flying a kite. The men in charge of the sails took orders from an officer called the boatswain or bosun. During storms, the sails were clued up or drawn in to keep the ship from being blown hopelessly off course. Number two, I think you call this the forecastle. The forecastle is up front. The cook prepared meals for both the crew and the passengers in the forecastle or forecastle. Food aboard a merchant ship was hardly fine dining. Typically oatmeal, peas, pork, fish, beans, cheese, and other such foods that could be stored for long periods of sea, at sea. Number three is the tween decks. That's down here. Let's take a look. This is where the pilgrims lived. Imagine spending 65 straight days with a hundred strangers with no privacy and only a chamber pot for a toilet. What's more, most of the pilgrims were not prepared for the rough waters of their long voyage. They suffered injuries from being thrown against the walls of the wind-tossed ship. And when they weren't seasick, they were mostly bored. That's a long time to be in the hull of a ship. Number four is the hold. Let's see, that's even deeper down. This is where food and other supplies were stored. Merchant ships were measured by the size of their holds. The Mayflower, though small by today's standards, could carry 180 tons or large barrels, which would have made her one of the largest merchant ships of her day. Wine, water, sugar, spices, rice, oatmeal, meat, and cheese were among the items on board, along with the pilgrim's furniture and tools. Number five is the steerage. Imagine how you turn a boat that big. Can you imagine steering a 100 foot long ship without being able to see anything? That's what the helmsman did. He steered the ship from this room below deck by moving a large lever called a whipstaff, which in turn moved the rudder. The helmsman's eyes were provided by the conner, who shouted instructions to him from the deck above. I can't imagine trying to uh, steer a ship without even being able to see. Number six is the great cabin. Ooh, great usually means big. This is where the master or captain, his chief officers, and the ship's apprentice lived, slept, and ate. Despite the name, the great cabin wasn't all that large. The apprentice served the officers before it was his turn to eat. And the last part is the roundhouse. The roundhouse was a room where the master, or the captain, charted the ship's course. But 17th century mariners had no radar and no high-tech global positioning systems, what we call GPS. They had to go on deck and measure the position of the stars and the horizon with instruments like the quadrant and the cross staff, which helped determine the ship's latitude or north-south position. In other words, they had to be really good at math. Now, when you go and click 
uh, on the next page, the link, what it's going to do is it's going to bring you to the voyage page right here, take the journey. And this part does work on the iPad, so I thought you could do this on your own. Uh, just start by clicking the blue dot, the first blue dot, that's where you start, and then... September 6th, 1620. They will uh, take it from there and read to you. It should go straight from this dot to this dot to this dot, so you pretty much just have to watch. When you're finished, you can go back into Seesaw, and then you have your last item to do. Decide what items, what would you pack for your trip on the Mayflower? Think about that, 65 days in a ship, and then heading to a brand new world. I wonder what you'll bring.